Okay. Well, good morning, everyone. How y'all doing? Good. Ken Schaefer's doing good. Hey, listen, y'all, when you talk back to me, I preach at least 15% better, okay? So here we go. We're going to do that today. Hey, good morning. If you have your Bibles, I want to invite you to open them up or turn them on to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Paul's second letter to the church at Corinth, chapter 4. If we've not had the chance to meet, like I said, I'm Hunter Melton, and if you are our guest, we are honored uh, that you would be here. We pray that this place would become like home very quickly. Today is, like I've already said, what we have been calling Vision Sunday. Now, in some respects, this is true. Like, we're going to lay out a vision, uh, especially coming out of a season of transition, for where God has our church here at 29 Whitsett Road for the next few years. But in another way, we get the honor and the privilege of being a part of Brentwood Baptist Church. And our senior pastor, Jay Strother, at the Brentwood campus is laying out uh, for at all nine of our campuses kind of where we are going to be putting an emphasis for the next five years. And so if you want to hear that from our senior pastor, I'm the campus and teaching pastor here, meaning that I'm the pastor at this location. Uh, but if you want to hear about where God is going to lead our church over the next five years, all nine campuses, I want to invite you to join us at the Brentwood campus September 8th. So I, I say all of that to say, um, today we get to talk about our unique season of praying towards where God is leading the church at Woodbine as we move out of this transition period and, and embrace what God has us going to next. And so, hey, look, if you're here and this is like your first time here, you're hopping right in at the beginning of what God's next chapter is for our, our church. And if you've been here for years, I'm asking you to join us, to, to carry the wisdom and the, 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 um, the experience, the, the beautiful heart for this place into this next season. Because here's what I know. God has made each of us unique because each one of us has something unique to contribute to the body of Christ. In the same way that a, a body is not complete without a mouth, right? To both to eat, but also to proclaim and to say beautiful things and to bless other people with. Or nobody is complete without any body part, right? Like we need every body part helps to make a complete body. And in the same way, we are not complete without you. And so this is what we're going to talk about today is the way that our church is moving forward. But in a very real way, we're not moving forward as a 5013C, right? It's just a, a church building organization. We're moving together as a family and as a body. And so we are not complete without the way that God has wired you, both to receive and to give. And so we welcome you on this journey. And if the Lord doesn't come back for the next 50 years, 60 years, 90 years, however long it is, that we will be proclaiming the gospel from this sacred piece of real estate to a watching world. So if you have a copy of God's word, I would invite you, if you're able, to stand with us this morning as we read 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18. Paul says this to a church, a lot like the church at Woodbine. And he says this to them. Therefore, because of this, we do not give up. Even though our outer person is being destroyed, our inner person is being renewed day by day. For our momentary light affliction is producing for us an absolutely incomparable eternal weight of glory. So we do not focus on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary but what is unseen is eternal. Okay, let's pray to the Lord because we need him more than we need a pastor. We need Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are inviting you into this space. We know you're already here, but the posture of our hearts 
is that before we need a proclaimer, we need the message. And Lord, before we need the message, we need a God. And you are our king. We're going all in on you. We're making much of you. We're proclaiming your name. And we want the renown and the desire of our hearts to be Yahweh forever. And so Jesus, as we proclaim today, as we listen, I pray that each of us would have soft hearts to ask, Lord, because we're not passive spectators, but active participants, to ask where you are leading us in this next season, but for the rest of our lives, to make much of you. Lord, we love you, and it's your name that we pray, because it's good, it's eternal, it's forever. Amen and amen. You may have a seat. Okay, keep your Bibles open as you take your seat. Um, Okay, anytime, if we're looking at the text, 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18, anytime that we see the word therefore, it's always a good idea to ask what? What it's there for, right? Oh, come on now. That's like Awana 101, right? That's like anytime you see therefore, you got to ask what it's there for. Um, by the way, you can tell my son, the only thing he's efficient at is giving germs. And so if you can pray for me uh, as uh, I, I deliver this message that I'm not just spacing out uh, with the sinus kind of thing going on. But anytime that we see, therefore, we need to ask what it's there for, which means this, that every text you come to has a context. And so we want to know why we don't give up. Why is Paul, who was a missionary who traveled over 10,000 miles across Middle East and across Europe, carrying the gospel to those who needed it. Like, why does he, in particular, not want to give up? If anyone deserved a a nice retirement with a candle and a cake and beautiful kind of gifts for a job well done, buddy, it's our boy Paul. But Paul did not give up. Well, he says in verses 14 through 15, if you have your text, you can look back with me. He says, for we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus, so God the Father, also will raise us with Jesus and present us, us being Paul and his companions who are making much of Jesus, will present us with you, the church. So indeed, everything is for your benefit, your being the church there, so that as grace extends through more and more people, it may cause thanksgiving to increase to the glory of God. Okay, so what does all that mean? Paul, by the way, if y'all have a hard time reading Paul, he has like a ton of run-on sentences. Uh, Peter even says in one of his letters, hey, Paul's writings can be a little hard to understand. But so yeah, if Paul's getting called out in scripture, you know, like just, it's okay. Like if it's hard to understand, you're in good company. But what is he saying? Paul is talking to this local church and he's writing a letter to the church in Corinth, a a church like us. So what is he saying in layman's terms? He's saying, look, my great reward in ministry is not an attaboy or a job well done. My great reward in in Jesus is seeing Jesus made famous through you, the church. So what does that mean? That means as God's grace and mercy gets to more and more people, more and more churches are established, that it will cause not only Paul's joy to increase, so he looks at his churches and he says, job well done. Or in the church at Corinth, their case, he's like, you are wrong, right? Like that's what he's saying to them. But what he is saying is this, is that the church is too important to give up on. So I got to keep going. I got to keep going. As grace extends through more and more people, look, God's grace, which came to you, is never meant to be contained within the walls of the church, but it is always meant to be taking ground. Hey, church family, can I tell you this? Like, it doesn't all ride on us, but God uses the local church to make his name known across the world. And so in a very real way, when churches fail to be places of gospel proclamation, they lose their way. 
You want to know why people argue over different things that seem kind of trivial? It's because they've lost their first love, which is gospel proclamation. It's the building up of the body. It's the caring of the people. It's the glory of Jesus. Which leads me, remember, we said Vision Sunday for the Church of Woodbine. It leads me to our little outpost here in Nashville, our little sliver of, uh, of the kingdom. And it leads me to think, how has this been like lived out before? Well, I want to take you on a story, a little, little journey uh, back a hundred years ago. In 1924, a group of people got together to purchase property on Fox, Fox Avenue, which was to become a church. Y'all, they got together, pooled their money, bought property, built a cabin starting on sun up. They built the cabin, and on that, by that night, they were praising Jesus inside of that cabin. They built things a little differently back then, right? I mean, that is crazy. Thanksgiving Day of 19, uh, in November of 1924. You know, in the middle of the Roaring Twenties, a group of men and women decided that the glory of God needed an outpost in the middle of Nashville. In 1934, the band of people meeting in that cabin on Fox Avenue officially became a church. Hunter, let's throw up that first slide. Anybody here remember that building? Anybody here remember Fox Avenue, right, being there? Okay, 1934, that was Woodbine Baptist Church. In 1934, the population of Nashville was 154,000. Less than 100 years ago, it was 154,000. It's over 700,000 just in the city limits of Nashville. 1.6 million if you think of the greater Nashville area. They were in the height of the Great Depression and still knew that the gospel was too important to give up, right? Think about Paul. What is he saying? Therefore, we do not give up. I wasn't there in 1934, obviously, um, but I wonder if the conversation was, guys, this is too important. We'll pull together everything that we have, but the gospel is too important. We have other things to think about, our lives to think about. How are we going to put bread and food on the table, but man, we are here and we can do no other. There was no way that they could have known what the city of Nashville would become 90 years later, but their desire to focus on what is unseen, the glory of God, laid the groundwork for who we are today. I don't know if y'all know this or not, but Fox Avenue uh, would be kind of the location of where 440 would run through. And so in 1958, Woodbine Baptist Church sold its property on Fox Avenue to the state of Tennessee because Interstate 440 was running right through it. So in 1960, the church moved to our current property. In 1968, construction started on this building. Y'all, where did that steeple go? I love that thing. That thing was like a proclaimer right there. I miss that. I wish we could have that there. So in 1970, y'all check this out. 1970, 54 years ago, um, people started proclaiming Jesus in this building. Y'all, can you imagine, just think right now of the men and the women who have come into this room and have encountered Jesus in a powerful and a unique way. Hey, can I tell you the best news? There's more to come. There is more to come. So we have 1970. They knew the gospel was too important to give up. Moving their church was nothing compared to the weight of the glory that our four runners were to reap. In 2002, we have another picture here. Uh, Woodbine Baptist Church welcomed a Haitian Baptist congregation. Anybody remember that? right? A Haitian congregation meeting in the chapel. This was just one of many congregations. There was a Laotian congregation here, many um, uh, Anglo congregations, church plants that would meet here. And uh, Chris Walton, who's back in the tech booth, his mother was Mary Beth Walton, who started serving here in 1975 and just passed away a couple of years ago. He told me that every time churches would come to Woodbine Baptist, they would let them use their property and never charge them rent. Y'all, Caring for the nations has always been a part of the heart of Woodbine Baptist Church and now the church at Woodbine. Isn't it beautiful that seeing and valuing diversity has always been about who we are here at 29 Whitsett Road and will always be a part of our DNA? Which leads us to 2014. I want us to look back at scripture 
verse 18, says this. So we do not focus on what is seen. So we don't focus on the things that when you look around and you see hardship in your life, that is not your ultimate reality. Your ultimate reality is Jesus and his glory. And the things happening around you are just scaffolding to get you there. So in verse 18, we do not focus on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is what? Eternal. In 2014, Woodbine Baptist Church, with uh, years of decline in attendance and facilities that were, uh, were hard to maintain, um, they could have focused on what was seen. And they could have made that their ultimate reality. They could have looked back on the glory years of old when ministry programs were at their heyday and celebrated that. There's a nice room uh, of a like kind of a Woodbine Baptist history, and there were pictures of dozens and dozens of kids and choirs and uh, groups and all these things from back in the 60s and the 70s. They could have focused on what was and not thought about what will be. And in the flesh, that would have been a real thing. They could have focused on that. They could have thought about the lives that were changed and the men and women who were no longer there and mourned that and just sat there and done nothing. However, Woodbine Baptists knew that there were greater days ahead. They knew that this sacred piece of ground had too rich of a history and had too great of a future. So in September of 2014, Woodbine Baptist Church merged and became a part of Brentwood Baptist. And they were to become the church at Woodbine. And I love that. I love that our name stayed with the neighborhood in it. Because that is a beacon call for who we are to reach here at home, even as we go out to reach the nations. If your faith has grown in this place, who here has come since 2014? Okay, most everybody's hand should be up, right? I mean, right? If you've been here since 2014, If your faith has been impacted, then you have been impacted by a beautiful act of obedience of people you might not have ever met. But hey, guess what? That's how the gospel goes. Is faithful men and women from generation to generation pass down the faith. And friends, I know we just got done with the Olympics, but the baton is being passed to us. The baton is being passed to you and to me here at the church at Woodbine. You see, the unseen good news of Jesus is always meant to be seen through the local church. And that is why we are here and will continue to be here until the Lord comes back. Which leads me to where we're going. So we can throw up that next slide there, the heal and prepare. So in 2024, we will heal and prepare. I want you to hear four words today and you can write them down and just kind of stew on them if you want to. But four words, first ones, heal, prepare, and then the last two are activate and engage. Heal and prepare, activate and engage. You know, um, the Church of Woodbine is 10 years old, and we have this beautiful opportunity to pray, imagine, and plan for the coming years as a church family. So I got here on July 7th, which means today is like my eighth Sunday with you all. Yeah, you get, yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. You can count on two hands the amount of Sundays that I have been here. That, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not here. I've not been here for long, but God willing, for years and years to come, we'll labor together. And so I have made it my mission to not like say a lot of things other than to proclaim God's word, but behind the scenes to ask a lot of questions. And so we've gathered groups of people. I've listened and prayed. Um, By the way, asking a lot of questions should be on every pastor's job description. And as I've listened and observed, I begin to sense that a plan to heal and to prepare for the rest of 2024 was the best path forward, best path forward for our church family. Now, here's what I mean. By the way, if you're thinking to yourself, well, I thought we would hear a lot more on Big Vision Sunday. Novelty is not always a Christian virtue because we worship a God who is never changing. And so there are just some things that our forefathers have done. There's some things that the ancient church fathers have done that we will continue to do because God has desired for his people to worship him in a way that glorifies him. And so novelty is not always a Christian virtue, right? But here's what I mean. To heal. To heal is in the DNA of every Christ follower. 
Who here knows that Jesus has healed you of your greatest disease, your sin disease, right? That Jesus has taken a heart that was a rebel to him and has made it alive again. Friends, to heal is a Christian virtue. Now we get to model for a hurting community around us what it means to heal and what it means to be in the next and to find the true healing that we all need. So my vision for us as your campus pastor is to help our church heal after a season of transition by providing several environments in 2024 where you as a congregation aren't being asked to do a lot, but much is being given to you. To be in a season of transition inherently means that there is change. And where change comes there inherently means that there's a lot of energy being expended. And we want to bless you by giving you environments and spaces where you are being poured into because you deserve to be shaped and molded into the image of God. And the church is one of the primary ways to do that. Thank you, Darcy. Come on, you're always an encourager. Here's how we'll do that. Here's just some ways, okay? This is not exhaustive, but I want to give you the, what's kind of built into my heart for this place as I sit here on a Monday afternoon and look out over our neighborhood or as I sit here on a Tuesday and I just sit and look into an empty congregation and we think about you all. Here's, here's some of the ways that we want to help to heal and to move forward. Number one, panel discussions. Uh, panel discussions are just things where you can come and ask questions to pour into you as college students. By the way, our college students are coming back and we're so grateful that our college students are here. So we want to pour into you as college, yes. We want to pour into you as college students, as young professionals, as uh, families, newlyweds, as uh, people with kids who are old, who are young, who are everywhere in between. And finally, we want to do panel discussions for empty nesters and how to wring out the rest of your life for the glory of God. But we also want to do worship nights. We want to provide spaces uniquely where you can come and be poured into, connect with Jesus, to be prayed over. We have a ministry resident who's coming on September 15th, and she'll be with us through November 3rd, and it is her job to provide consistency, not only here on Sunday mornings, but to also help us to lead out in worship nights. Uh, family picnics, we just did one last week. The next one's September 22nd. Hey, listen, Jesus did a lot of ministry around a table, y'all, okay? These are holy, holy calories that we're talking about eating. They don't count, okay? We want to have times where our people can be together face-to-face. -face. Here's the deal, not just to talk like we always do, but to welcome the people in who God is bringing and there's just something different when you're eating together. I don't know if it's just you're, you're, you're both eating the same food and the Lord's just like, let's, let's center, sync you up right now. I don't know. But it's beautiful, right? That's three different ways that we want to talk about that. But Paul says this, our outer person is being destroyed. Now, what that means is this, is your flesh kind of breaks down. Anybody, I'm 33, which is a weird thing. To some people, I'm ancient. To other people, I'm a kid. But I like sneeze wrong, and I like pull a muscle in my back, right? Like, I feel this. I feel that body wasting away kind of deal. In this life, there will be heartaches. Who here knows that in this life, there will be heartaches, right? Heartaches come for us all. That's what it means to be human. What we do with that heartache is what it means to be Christian. Right? And so this life, there will be heartaches, there will be letdowns, there will be disease and discouragement. But friends, our God is the great physician. And if we let him, there is no hurt that he won't heal. If we're truly open to all that the Lord would have for us, our God is the great physician and his promise of healing, whether in this life or the next, is sure and certain. And God is for you. But finally, uh, we will prepare. Uh, I want to kind of illustrate this by giving you a story. Uh, this, this summer, I took Joy uh, to England. Uh, we went to London and we went to Scotland. I had a, a, a month off, had a sabbatical. Our Great Floor Church gives us that. And, uh, and, and we went the last week of June and got back just a few days before I came here to preach my first sermon. And I was so excited because I love the British Isles. Anybody here ever been to the British Isles before? It's a beautiful place, even in the summer, nice green, lush grass. Not like here where everything just kind of dies you know, kind of deal, all the grasses. Um, and, and, but I knew in order for Joy to have a beautiful trip, like I really wanted her to love it, that I needed to prepare. 
And so I sat for months. Joy was like, what are you doing? I was like, I think I've discovered a calling as a travel agent. I don't know. Like if this whole like pastor thing doesn't work out, I'll plan your Disney vacation right now. Let's go, right? Okay, so here's the document. Uh, I, I took a screenshot of all of the things that if you, if you all want that, I, I'll, I'll give it to you for free, right? You'll see Hunter Melton Travel Inc. It's coming, right? But I, I planned all this out. I looked at the individual restaurants. I made reservations. I, I did the thing. I bought the tickets ahead of time. I knew that if you didn't buy tickets to Windsor Castle, you uh, were going to get like, uh, you, you weren't going to be able to get in. And as a matter of fact, we got there at our time and they were telling people, sorry, we're all sold out for the day. I said, not me because I got the tickets, right? It was beautiful. Now, we were able to enjoy the trip. The purpose of the trip wasn't to prepare, but the preparation of the trip made the trip. Now, why do I say that? Because God has given us now a beautiful season of preparing. When we finally went to London, we were ready. When we prepare now well here, we will be ready for all that God has for us. You know, in the same way as we are healing, we are also called to prepare. To heal without a plan to prepare for our next season will ultimately lead to stagnation. And so we're coming out of the season of transition. What's one of the best ways to heal? To prepare for the next. And so uh, over this season of transition, between when Doug left back in October, our previous pastor, and when I got here, we had a lot of change in our church. Some people left, but others have come. And if you were here since the summer, I want to say thank you. Thank you for being here, for joining us in this journey. We're so glad that you're here. And in the same way, some staff have left and others have come or will shortly come. I made this announcement last week, and I can tell you all now, you all might know, some of you might know Brimley Luna and her husband, Jorge. Brimley is coming back as our ministry assistant. So we are so grateful for that. Brimley is a wonderful uh, person and a wonderful woman of God. Her husband is incredible. So I think Brimley and Jorge are like in South America right now, so they're probably not watching this. But when you get back, we love y'all, okay? We're in the talks, in the interview process with a worship minister right now. Friends, in order to fully prepare to carry out our mission of engaging the whole person with the whole gospel of Jesus Christ, anywhere, anytime, with anybody, we need to take time to prepare our church. Um, we have ministries that do not have the right amount of people in them to staff them, to volunteer, to lead out in them. So if you are not uh, serving our church, we need you. How has God wired you? If there is a talent and a gift, there will always be a need to have that filled. And we need you, friends. Because we got to get ready. You know those people you prayed for to come to these pews? The word of God never returns void. When we pray, they will come. And we want to be ready to welcome them to a safe, good, and beautiful gospel, gospel proclamation church. But how will we do this? Well, number one, we want to offer a gospel conversation training. Who here knows the scariest thing to do is to share your faith with somebody, right? Like it's like, oh, man, don't talk about religion. Don't talk about politics. Like I'm going to, if I share the thing, then I'm going to lose the friend forever. We want to equip you how to do that. So October 13th, we've already got that scheduled out. We want to give you that gospel conversation training. We're also going to work hard on being fully staffed by the end of this year. Uh, in November, who here knows what your spiritual gifts are, right? I find that most of us don't actually know. In November, we're going to do a refresher on your spiritual gifts so that you can know how to best to serve the church and the world. We're going to start prayer walking the neighborhood. Here's the deal. What's so cool is that this neighborhood turns over every three years, which every three years means this, that we have new people to engage with the gospel, it's not, gospel, uh, it's not gospel losing people if they leave our neighborhood. It's gospel goodbyes, but they have to be engaged with the gospel beforehand. And there are many ways that the Lord is going to lead us to prepare in the rest of 2024. But ultimately, we are, we are to heal and to prepare because we are called to go. So uh, if you'll throw that next uh, slide up. In 2025, we will activate and we will engage. Everybody say activate and engage. Okay. In 2025 and beyond, we are going to activate our church and engage the neighborhood and the nations. 
As we have healed and we have prepared, we will find that our church will be activated by what? Growing in our faith by being in groups. If you are not in a group, we're going to have a group connect September 15th, right, Johnny? September 15th, we want you to get connected into a life-giving group to bear burdens. We're going to hear God's word proclaimed as we gather on Sundays. Hey, friends, I promise as your pastor to always make the uh, word of God dwell in me before I proclaim it to you. And that is the central part of why we gather on Sunday mornings. But we're also going to share our faith and gospel conversations. And we're going to respond in generosity through giving. Uh, But also, we're going to take the gospel from here to the world by going. Um, Although the details are still being worked out, I can tell you that we have three uh, or so mission journeys uh, booked for next year. One of which is going to Vancouver, Canada. I don't know if y'all remember Grace Johnson. Grace Taylor was here back in 2017, 2018. They pastor a church. Well, her husband pastors a church. They're a part of a church uh, on top of a mountain where there's one church for 30,000 people. It's the only church there in Vancouver, Canada. We can get there in literally uh, three hours, super cheap, and we're going to go and help to make the name of Jesus known, but we're also going to learn how to engage different cultures in one of the most diverse cities on the, uh, on the planet, and I want to invite you to be a part of that. I also have made it a goal of ours that by the summer of 2026, we will have had some kind of contact with every home in the Woodbine neighborhood. Because the gospel light that shines the farthest shines the brightest at home. So my question for you is this. I want to go ahead and invite the band to come back up. My question for you is this. Is how is God calling you to be a part of his church here at the church at Woodbine? And you might say to yourself, well, gosh, Hunter, uh, I'm relatively new here. I don't know how exactly uh, God is, is calling me to do that. Can I tell you sometimes? That community is not found, it's formed. Meaning this, go all in, if not here, somewhere else where God is calling you to be a part of his church. For 90 years, this church has proclaimed Jesus here in this neighborhood. And if God tarries, we'll do it another 90. But I'm asking for you to pray and to consider these four words and how you might help us in the midst of this. Um, I spent some time in our legacy room uh, this past week. If you ever wanna see it, I'll I'll take you up there and show, it's awesome. Uh, Ray Newfelt, anybody remember Ray Newfelt? A brother who's long been home with Jesus. But he said in 1984, at the 50th anniversary of Woodbine Baptist Church, he said this, I regret that we have not said more kind words sent more cards, made more calls, and show more love for our Woodbine friends. Hey friend, that's like a voice calling out from the past to say don't continue to make the mistake of not engaging the place that I have put you, that the Lord has put you. Like make Jesus' name known where you are. And by God's grace, we will pray to that end. Friends, we do not give up. Why? Because the gospel came to you from someone else who chose to not give up. And so this Sunday is is meant to be one that kind of pokes and prods our spirit into saying, where does God have me to serve this beautiful, amazing, God-called body of Christ. Y'all, this is the loveliest place. This is the best place. This is the people that God has called us to be with forever. And so I'm going to ask, will you join us? Will you be a part of what God has for us in this next chapter of the Church of Woodbine? So that one day, maybe somebody, some young whippersnapper, right, comes in and he uses one of your quotes as a prod to the next generation to not give up. Why? Because God is making all things new.
So let's do this. Let's take some time to pray. Uh, And then Adam and the team are going to lead us in a song of response.